everyone. Welcome to Tales for Twos. My name is Miss Lorena and I'm going to read stories all about stars today. So I'm going to start off with our hello song and it goes, if you're ready for a story, take a seat. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. Clap your hands and stomp your feet. Make your hands all nice and neat. If you're ready for a story, take a seat. All right, good job. And as you can see here, I have my shapes. So let's start off with the yellow circle, green rectangle, blue triangle, and down below, orange oval, and this is pink. So a pink square. And last is the red heart. So my bunny has gone missing. Will you help me find her? So where, oh where has my little bunny gone? Oh where, oh where can she be? Could she be under the pink square? Let's look. No, she's not under the pink square. How about the blue triangle? No, she's not under the blue triangle either. Where, oh, where can my little bunny be? Oh, where, oh, where can she be? Can she be maybe under the orange oval? No, not under there. Where, oh, where can my little bunny be? Oh, where, oh, where can she be? Maybe the green rectangle. Should we try there? Let's look. There she is. Thank you so much for helping me find my little bunny. So I do have a little tune for you here. And um, it's called Mr. Sun because the sun is known as also a star. So it goes, oh, Mr. Sun, sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Oh, Mr. Sun, sun, Mr. Golden Sun, hiding behind a tree. These little children are asking you to please come out so we can play with you. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Good job. All right, so our first book is called Henry's Stars, and this is by David Elliott. So there's Henry. He's looking up at all the stars. Henry sat quietly on his step, staring up at the night sky. It was a beautiful warm evening, and as he looked from star to star, they seemed to form a picture in the darkness. Oh, he squealed, what's that? It's a great big starry pig running across the sky. Henry raced over to the wool, wool shed where Maisie, Daisy, and Clementine were getting ready for bed. Bah! What's all the excitement, Henry? They bleated. You bah! I've found the great pig in the sky, squealed Henry. Where? Show us, said the sheep. There are his ears, and there are his legs, and there is his curly tail, he said, pointing at a group of stars. See? Do you see a pig right here? I don't see a pig. Maisie, Daisy, and Clementine looked where Henry pointed. Ah, yes, I see it, said
said Daisy. There is a sheep's ear and woolly body. How clever you are, Henry. You have found a great sheep. Just then, Abigail came sauntering over. What are you doing? She asked. Shouldn't you all be in bed? Bah! We found the great sheep of the stars, cried Maisie, Daisy, and Clementine triumphantly. Great pig, actually, said Henry. Abigail looked at the stars. She craned her head and whisked her tail. Ah, uh, yes, I see it, she mooed excitedly. What does it look like now? First it was a pig, then sheep, and now... There is a cow's horn, said Abigail, waving her hoof at the sky, and a handsome cow's tail. It's definitely a great star cow. And she looks hungry. She thinks she may just eat those stars over there. What kind of noise do cows make? Do they go moo? Just then, Mr. Brown came plodding over the yard. What's all this? He whinnied. Why are you all staring into the sky? We found the great star cow, mooed Abigail. The great sheep of the stars, actually, said Maisie, Daisy, and Clementine, Clementine frowning. Henry just sighed. Move over, I'll settle this, said Mr. Brown, getting himself comfortable. They all waited while Mr. Brown looked carefully at the sky. What does he see? So this is Mr. Brown. Ah, uh, yes, I see it, he snorted finally. It's a great starry horse. I see his head and his mane and his hooves flying. He's galloping like the wind. How nice of you to find him. You mean the great star cow, said Ab Abigail indign indignantly. Bah, he means the great sheep of the stars, argued the sheep. By now, the chickens had joined in. What do you think the chickens see? Maybe more chickens? Look, they squawked, pointing their wings. Heavenly hens flying all over the place. Excuse me, said Henry sternly. There are no great sheep of the stars, or great star cows, or great starry horses, or heavenly hens. There is just my great pig, and that's that. But now, when he looked up at where the great pig once was, all he saw, saw was a sheep's ear next to a cow's horn on a galloping horse's body. What happened to his great pig, he wondered. Henry sighed, his mind all a clutter. He decided to go back home. He sat forlornly on his step and stared up at the sky. He was beginning to think that his friends might be right. Maybe there was no great pig after all. But as he sat there wondering, slowly the squabbles of the farmyard dwindled away into the night and Henry found himself alone again with his stars. Oh, he squealed, I see it, I see it. There 
there, running in starlight across the night once more, was Henry's great pig. Henry couldn't wait to show the others. Do you think the others are going to see the great pig? I don't think so. I think they'll see the sheep, the horse, and the heavenly hens. All right. So I do have a little rhyme here, and it's called Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. So, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. All right. And with that, I do have a couple of little stars here. More than a couple. I have four stars here, so we're going to spread them out. There we go. All right. So I have, let's count. One, two, three, four. Can you show me four fingers? Four. We have four stars. And it goes, four little stars. Can you wink? Can you close one eye? Winking at me. One shot off. And then there were, how many? Let's count. One, two, three. Can you show me with your fingers? Three, three little stars with nothing to do. One shot off and then there were, let's count. One, two, show me with your fingers how many? Two, two little stars afraid of the sun. One shot off and then there was, how many? Show me with your fingers. One. One little star alone is no fun. It shot off and then there were nine. Good job. All right, now I have another book here and it's called Stars. Look at all those stars. And this is by Mary Lynn Ray and Marla Frazy. A star is how you know it's almost night. Can you see the one little star there? As soon as you see one, there's another and another. And the dark that comes doesn't feel so dark. What if you could have a star? They shine like little silver eggs you could gather in a basket. Except you know you can't. Not really. But you can draw a star on shiny paper and cut around it. Then you can put it on your pocket. Having a star in your pocket is like having your best rock in your pocket but different because a star is different from a rock. Pin a star on your shirt and you can be a sheriff. Put a star on a stick and you've made a wand. If you hold a wand the right way, you might see a wish come true. Not always, only sometimes. You never know about a wish. You can give a star to a friend, but never give away the one you keep in your pocket. You need to know it's there. Some days you feel shiny as a star. If you've done something important, people may call you a star. But some days you don't feel shiny, and that's okay. Those days, it's good to reach for the one in your pocket. 
If you ever lose your star, you can draw another or you can find one. There are places. Moss where you might see fairies is made of green stars. White stars in June grass become strawberries in July. Yellow stars on pumpkin vines become October pumpkins. Snowflakes are stars. Blow a ball of dandelion and you blew a thousand stars into the sky. A button can have a star on it. And if you always brush your teeth, someone might give you a red or green or blue or gold or silver star. There might be a star on the calendar to mark a special day. But stars that come with night, for those you have to wait for night, you need some dark to see them. It may help to have on pajamas. Then you look up. Almost always you will find one and another and another and another and then a few more. And if sometimes you can't see them, they're still there. every night, everywhere. The end. All right, so now I have a couple more rhymes for you. And this one, if you wanna stretch out a little bit, you can stand up and we're gonna go bend and stretch, reach for the stars. There goes Jupiter. There, here comes Mars. Bend and stretch and reach for the stars. Stand on your tippy toes, oh so high. All right, and I have a really fun rhyme for you here. So you can stand up and then we're gonna do this with our hands. You just wanna swipe them. So it goes zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, come and climb my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. And if you want to crouch down, and then we're going to jump um, after I say blast off. So, ready? So, five. Four, three, two, one, blast off! All right, good job. Whew. So, if you want to sit back down, we are going to read our last book here. And it's called Star in the Jar. And this is by Sam Hay and Sarah Massini. My little brother likes looking for treasure, tickly treasure. Glittery treasure, even trash can treasure. But one day he found something extra special. So special, I thought it must belong to someone else. Can you see what he found there? A star, right? We asked the helpful girl from school, but she said it wasn't hers. We showed it to the lunch lady, but it wasn't hers either. We asked the sheriff, but he shook his head. Can you shake your head no? The fairies hadn't lost it, nor had the wizards. 
If no one has lost it, my little brother said, that means I can keep it. My little brother loved his new treasure. He put it in a jar and carried it everywhere. As the day turned into night, the little treasure got shinier, but it didn't look happy. Then my little brother spotted something up high in the dark, dark sky. There was a message. Lost one small star. It's here, my little brother shouted to the sky. But the little star's friends were too far away to hear. We had to help the star get back home. We tried climbing up high, teaching it to fly, and bouncing the star back up to the sky. But nothing worked. Maybe the little star would have to stay in the jar forever. Then an idea popped into my head. I raced inside and looked in every cabinet and every drawer. I found flashlights and twinkling lights, book lamps and bike lights, glow sticks and headlamps. And we sat and we sent a message Then the sky began to crackle and fizz, and the stars joined together and made a long, swirly, whirly, sparkling silver chain all the way down to our backyard. And they lifted their little friend gently back up to the sky. My little brother felt sad he lost his special treasure. But then, thank you, friend. He realized he hadn't lost his treasure. He'd made a friend. A forever friend who would twinkle him to sleep every night. Good night, star. The end. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in. And here it's time for our goodbye song. So it goes, tickle the clouds, tickle your toes, turn around and tickle your elbows. Reach down low reach up high story time is over now wave goodbye see everyone